Congratulations, June. Such incredible work. Those costumes, thousands of costumes. We have to talk about the still suits. What conversations did you have about bringing those still suits? Those, those are sur that's survival gear. Um, so what fabric went into that and bringing that to life? Many fabrics. We created what's called a micro sandwich yes. of all of these wicking fabrics. Because though we didn't really have to recycle human wastewater for our actors. <laughs> we did have to keep them cool in the desert. And we used um, several layers of fabric, some Japanese, some we bought locally here in Los Angeles, some we sourced in London. And we layered them so that it would wick the moisture away from the skin and be a coolant when the wind from the desert would hit the actors. So that was one fabric, and then the rest was uh, molded plastics and um, tubing and uh, little, uh, what do you call them, uh, places to trap the liquid pockets and stuff located all through the still suit. There were great descriptions in the, in the book that were our guide. There's actually a, an encyclopedia of Dune that, that goes into detail about what it is. And so it gives you great reference. How did you divide the costume work between the two of you? What was that conversation? Um, I don't know. It just kind of fell into place. Yeah. Divide and conquer. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about Baron Harkonnen's kaftan, mumu. You know, what fabric did you use for him, and what was his look, the conversation that you wanted to go into him? That was a conversation early on with Denis when he, I think the first time I met with him in Mary Perrin's office, he asked me what I thought the Baron Harkonnen should look like, and how I would dress a 400 pound man. And uh, I said, with a lot of fabric. But uh, it, the inspiration, I said, I, I've always been a huge fan of Marlon Brando. It's been an obsession all my life. And I just thought of Kurtz in Apocalypse. And I mentioned that to Denise warily, because I didn't know him that well then. And he said, that's exactly how I see him, Jacqueline. <laughs> so, went from there. And Rebecca Ferguson, her outfits in the beginning, Talk about crafting her look with the face jewelry and the scarves that we see. Like, who was she to you? Um, she was a, what I call my mod evil character. Yeah. Uh, her look came from a lot of medieval drawings, paintings, Giotto, uh, even, even went to Goya for her with all the black lace. Um, she was definitely medieval inspired, but also when she arrives in Arrakis, I really looked at a lot of um, Middle Eastern, North African references for the face veil. Yeah. We always kind of joke that we had to go a thousand years in the past to go 10,000 years in the future. <laughs> Bob, what look are you most proud of in the film? What look are you most proud of in the film? It's like asking to pick your favorite child, but I know. It's, um, uh, there are so many. Um, the, I think the scene I love, one of the scenes I love the most was the arrival of the Spacing Guild and that procession down the ramp with the Herald of Change. I thought that was just so beautiful. And it was one of the last things we shot, but I thought it was just such a powerful scene. What was the inspiration for those costumes there? The Avignon Papacy. Yeah. How I many thought there was a, a kind of a correlation between the yeah, Avignon pap Papacy and the execution of the Templars. The, Araki, the um, Atreides army being the Templars and the Spacing Guild being part of the Avignon yeah. Papacy that condemned them. So it was a, a kind of a subliminal yeah. looking at the past. What were the challenges of designing those costumes for 
you know, the lo those locations such as Jordan when it's like, what, 120 degrees and talk about that. Uh, I, well, I, I think that goes back to what we were talking about the still suit and, and Jacqueline and I both um, have worked on many films where the technology was important and we knew that especially the still suit was going to have to work in Budapest in cold temperatures on stage and in the extremely hot temperatures. Um, so that was the challenge. Also the fact that it had to fit all of our cast. So from Timothy to Rebecca to Jason Momoa, and, you know, each costume had to be a bespoke costume and, and function, be comfortable, feel good, and, and look good. Okay, how many costumes did you design in total, roughly? What do you think? 2,000. <laughs> Over 400 yeah. specialty costumes. Yeah. Yes, yes, let's get, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Incre incredible work. I mean, congratulations.